Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz, and today I'm joined by Amanda Wilmers, joining us from California. Amanda is our recently certified quantum soul guidance practitioner, and I'm excited to learn about her journey, her background, her additional qualifications, her unique style of delivering galactic astrology soul reading. Welcome, Amanda. How are you today? Oh, thank you. I'm doing so good. So excited to be here and be graduated from your course. It's been such a wonderful journey. Congratulations and super well done. Today, we're recording it on 26th of April. 2024. It's a day before minor planet Sedna is shifting into Gemini for the next 60 years. Such a big, momentous, auspicious time and uh, also a really busy time for us overall, still marinating in the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction around this time. How do you feel lately in the last few weeks? And even this week in particular, it feels even stronger. We also had a full moon a couple of days ago. How are you feeling? Which chart areas, life areas are all these energies hitting on, do you know? I, I genuinely, I feel like almost like a new version of myself was birthed. We originally were going to do this recording a couple weeks ago and I'm so glad that I waited till after the eclipses because everything with building my website and after the eclipses I feel so ready now to fully accept clients and bookings and for me in this Jupiter Uranus conjunction it is right on the cusp of my fourth and fifth house so I feel like all of this creative energy has just like come through and I just feel I've come so much more into my own over these days this past eclipse both of them the Aries and and the Libra were really big transition points for me. So I'm just excited and I feel Mercury going direct to yesterday. I just feel like ready to communicate, ready to get out there. It's also spring in the part of the world that I'm in, in the US and all the flowers are blooming. And I felt like all the work that was done over winter and this past year of my life really is all coming to this beautiful blooming point. Amazing. Such a good timing. And I just love how it happens kind of unconsciously when we reschedule events events and kind of just look at the wide open calendar and just picking a day and voila, there it is, the perfect one. I believe today you are also launching your website, is that right? Correct, so, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll go through it, we'll share screen uh, soon. But before we go there, Amanda, where would you like to start in terms of your spiritual journey, your connection to your intuitive senses, connecting with the other side, also astrology, exploring all that? Would you tell us a little more about that experience for you? It's really been a whole life journey for me. Definitely. Definitely the past decade of my life, it's opened up more and more, but I grew up with my mom uh, being a tarot card reader, growing up in like a little house on the forest. And I remember like banging on buffalo hide drums and having experiences with angels. Like I remember seeing a lot of angels as a kid and I've been reading people's cards that really been into astrology since I was really young. Everything just continued to open up. I did my first, I'll try and condense this because there's so much here, but um, I did my first yoga teacher training at 19 and I was like the youngest one in there by over a decade. It cracked my heart wide open. And that was really one of the biggest initiators on my path. And so I continued to do yoga and then did my next teacher training living on a monastery in Nepal. And I had, I was living in Hawaii and then I had two roommates in a row that were Reiki masters. And I was like, oh, there's something here. So my first Reiki sessions were actually like in my home in Hawaii. I just was so inspired by what was coming through. And, you know, my grandma had just passed and she would come into my readings. It's just one thing after another. And then I started also studying with shamans down in Peru. So I've been studying the shamanic path too through, I've been really inspired by indigenous cultures, whether that was, I lived in Australia for two and a half years, Hawaii. Yeah, mostly Peru though. A lot of experience going down to Peru and studying with shamans down there. So that was a huge part of my path. And then when Reiki came in, I did my Reiki masters down in Mexico at Yandara Yoga Institute. And then I also did my Akashic records down there. So I did Akashic records with you. And then I did a full course on opening Akashic Records as well. And then so I just started with astrology during my Saturn return. I just started looking at every aspect of my chart. I was like smack dab in my Saturn return. Like what is going on? I was not feeling well. I was just, I was a nanny for over 10 years and I was just, I wanted to show up differently for families. And I was at a big transition point and I was living with my family and I was going through my chart and my family's chart and everything was, oh my God, it's all here. Like this is so 
exciting. I just wanted to grab everyone's chart to read. So I did. And then I had, yeah, multiple readings, astrology readings that really changed the course of my life. Yeah, from brilliant astrologers, all saying just information that was so specific and so unique to me. One was about writing and I ended up publishing my own children's books. And yeah, so I just was like so excited to be able to give this to other people. Yeah, that's like my journey it condensed as much as I can. <laughs> it feels like just scratching the surface. It feels like there's so much more uh, amazingness there. You know what? I've discovered your Instagram as I was preparing for this podcast and you have a lot of beautiful uh, photos from the journeys across the world. So perhaps uh, the viewers can um, have a look through that full life experience. And my goodness, what a choice of incarnation into the family that was so open spiritually and belief systems wise and the guidance that you're receiving also through the lineage, through the uh, grandmother passing and now supporting you also yeah. from the other side. So that's just so, so beautiful. Yeah, I'm so curious, you know, after seeing your natal chart and with your permission, I'm going to share my screen and show it because you have a packed first house with large, strong stellium in Capricorn. I'm really grateful that you gave us permission to share your natal chart. And in this particular wheel, we are also showing the conjunct stars out of the selection of 70 something uh, stars that we use in our galactic astrology calculator. This is a new feature that was added exclusively for the students of galactic astrology soul reading practitioners course. Here we have the planetary stellium that is super powerful. We have Venus, Mars, Mercury, Sun, Neptune and Uranus all in Capricorn, all in first house, house of self first impression we have we make on others and how we relate to ourselves our identity i mean all this in capricorn how do you feel about the archetype of capricorn based on this experience <laughs> oh yeah since i was a child when i learned that i was a capricorn i remember my mom telling me probably when i was like seven or eight and i was just like running around my backyard screaming like i'm a capricorn i'm a capricorn and i didn't even really know what it meant but i was just so excited about it and when i saw my chart later on in life, I kind of understood that it was like more than just my sun sign being in Capricorn. There's so much. Yeah, the archetype, I'm still unpacking sometimes what the archetype means to me and what it means in different phases of my life. But I definitely have resonated with being an old soul since I was very young. I was the first, the youngest in my teacher training. I loved connecting with older people <laughs> and also children. That's my Leo moon. Also, I love to connect with children. But the archetype I have also really resonated with integrity wins anything that I do also particularly in my self-expression I do want it to be of like utmost integrity in uh, Stephen Forrest's book uh, The Inner Sky he talks about the Capricorn that like really like one of the main things that they desire is for who they are on the inside to be the same as who they are on the outside and that really hit home for me is in my self-expression it's like I really want it to be and my business and in all that I'm doing it's like who this is me this is amanda and i'm here and i'm learning that first house archetype this lifetime beautiful what you know <laughs> as if this all wasn't enough your chart ruler is saturn saturn rules capricorn and it is in your second house in aquarius even your values what is important to you is ruled by saturn the planet of high principles and integrity and doing things right all the lessons and the fact that it's in aquarius it adds that flavor of of seeking doing things in an unconventional way perhaps um, aligned with evolution and also thinking about how your actions impact the collective so it's just so beautiful and to top it all up the cherry on top here is the lyra ring nebula conjunct your sun you know the frequency of lyra is so strong in your chart that i do feel very very strongly through her soul records this ancient lyran archetypal story coming through very strongly it almost feels like an embodiment of that lyran the history coming true and how it can manifest in the current age and time. Would you like to comment on that? What was it like for you to connect with Lyra and learn about the Lyran stories, history? Oh, as you're saying that I have the full the full chills. As I had so many times while going through this course and each chart that I opened and the connections, particularly but to Lyra, I had a uh, long story short, actually my chart read by a student of yours who was studying with the Peruvian shamans that I studied with and she walked up 
to me. She's been doing astrology for 40 years. She's actually my mentor now. And I love her. And she just told me, she's like, you're you're a liar. And I didn't even know what that meant at the time. And I looked it up right after that. She read my chart. And then that night, Pam Gregory and you did the, the video on the Shockley Attractor and the Galactic Center. And I just, I signed up for the course that night. And I remember looking with Lyra. I, for one, I love when I read about Lyra, I love cats. And I, I just resonated so, so deeply with the story of Lyra and what had happened in the wars and everything. It just kind of like my whole life just started to come into alignment galactically and I had had experiences of seeing UFOs and then everything just started to come in more and more and I read more books preparing for contact and I just everything just started to make sense for me and a light bulb lit up I do I definitely feel a deep connection to the Lyra it it really does remind me of the Capricorn archetype because it's like this deep wisdom this rooted wisdom that's here to kind of I felt that like almost like a, a responsibility coming in and that is that is Capricorn the discipline discipline and responsibility of coming in with that wisdom how I can show up for the collective with that so I really resonate with Lyra that part of the journey the beginning there and the parts of that in my DNA. So yeah, when I saw the nebula, I remember the first time when I saw the Lyra Ring Nebula, it was like an explosion happened for me. And it's really exciting to give that also to other people, the charts that I've read that have been connected to the Lyra Ring Nebula. They've definitely been galactic travelers. So beautiful to see this embodiment here on this recording. And what I'm realizing is you have Neptune Uranus conjunction at around 20 degrees of Capricorn. So there is a whole generation there born around 1990s. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, millennials, they, you know, so many of them are actually carrying this frequency of Neptune, Uranus, and it makes me realize if they are now becoming activated to really step it up and a lot of that light and frequency must have been coming through in around the time when you were born. And um, if we think of it as generational frequency connected to galactic collectives, how powerful that vision is of how together we, you're all uh, creating changes and taking responsibility and commit to service and doing it in a very grounded and practical way. I love feeling this into, you know, many souls incarnated at that time. So exciting. Still so much support coming from the uh, galactic ancestors coming through for us. Another important alignment that are supporting your extraordinary life journey. I, I really believe that if we look, let's look at your Instagram account and just so Amanda Dash. Will miss. When you so you have selections here from Peru and Greece and uh, retreats and yoga, your beautiful partner here from your life and your experiences here. Just there's such a high vibe here and, you know, we can go on and on all the way down exploring your life experiences. So if you look at then the, the chart again, when you have very high frequency alignments and configurations in astrology, it can manifest as extraordinary life. But the additional things here that captured my attention was your Jupiter conjunct star Acrox, which according to Ptolemy is has a nature of Jupiter as well. So this is such a strong combination of having a star that is often seen in charts of astrologers or people who are interested in the occult. And for you, it's in your 10th house. It really feels like a blessing of a star to for your path ahead. When you choose the path of service, astrology, tarot, and all these things, it feels like this is such a beautiful alignment and just natural inclination, perhaps as um, one of the influencers of that. And of course, in Scorpio, which is linked to the occult, astrology, studying soul records, soul journeys, helping people to transform by getting to the core of, of their issues and seeking truth and all that. So just, again, such a beautiful validation of that. And um, your midheaven is conjunct archers and speaker, another two very powerful spiritual guides, perhaps also working through your Reiki. I, I've noticed that frequency of archers a lot through Reiki, coming through Reiki healers, that frequency of unconditional love and uh, great ability to transmute emotional, dense, stock energies 
I believe really Arcturians are so, so good at assisting with that, transmuting stuck emotions and bringing them to like a resolution. So that's such a good omen there for you. And here the Alpha Centauri conjunct your Pluto and Nord Node. If we expand the orb, that could be the connection or link to your connection to the indigenous cultures. And with this alignment, I keep sensing your previous incarnations during times when Alpha Centaurian humans as descendants of ancient Lyrans were on Earth before Atlantis fell, when they were honoring and supporting and guarding the Earth's treasures and all her teachings and all her wisdom. And uh, so the connection to these kind of ancient cultures, like in Peru, uh, that may be coming from there. I feel like this, you know, your Lyran origin, but also incarnation as Alpha Centaurian human, that looks very much like we do now, um, may have been part of your soul history too. How does that sit with you? Beautifully. I have definitely felt really connected to multiple different cultures around the world, particularly like I mentioned Peru, um, also the islands of Hawaii. I've spent a lot of time in the Lemurian time period. And yeah, I do believe that with so much earth in my chart even in our course that's like studying that typically people with a lot of earth in their chart have had a lot of incarnations so i do feel that there have been some incarnations here on earth and mm -hmm. that wisdom is coming through and it's really exciting to combine different different wisdom from different places around the world. I think it's interesting that for you, it's sitting in the 11th house, which is the house of collective, of more kind of extended space in connection to humans, not just like a small little circle of people, uh, friends that are kind of nearby, but really connecting with the greater collective and greater groups. And if we talk about, you know, the Alpha Centauri sitting there, then connection with the ancient collective beings and almost, and with the North Node there, almost feels like a, like your soul made a commitment to retrieve all that wisdom that was all connected to the ancient Lyran seeds of wisdom that then spread across different places of this galaxy and bringing it together back alive into the collective consciousness, supporting the healing and return to what is aligned with what's natural and organic and in support with Mother Earth. It's just, your chart just feels so, I feel so much hope and so much excitement knowing that beings like, like you are here and that there are many, many others in that entire generation and just feeling them becoming activated activated and popping all over the globe it's just we have so much support here we got this it's so exciting it really <laughs> is so exciting well tell me about your experience with uh, galactic astrology soul reading so when you had what is your focus in your sessions there's something uh, unique here with you the focus on uh, family and kind of relationships between parents and children would you like to talk a little bit about the potential of that and how it can assist people yeah so i worked as a nanny like i mentioned for about 10 years and i just saw this such a dynamic relationship between parents and children and then the more that i started to open up charts of parents and children i was seeing particularly first in my own family all of the different lessons we were teaching each other it had the same north node then this person had this and it was there was so much synergy between families i was so fascinated when i opened up charts and even knowing my own and discussing it with my mom i was like i wish she would have known some of this information when i was younger and she says the same now it's like that knowing even just a child's moon sign and their Mars sign and their Mercury, it can be so, so helpful for parents. And I just am so passionate about just bringing light into families' lives and being able to help them connect on a deeper level. So I won't, in those readings, go as much into galactic astrology as um, I have an offering called Astrology and Beyond which in that offering, I really would like to bring in galactic, akashic, as well as using just traditional astrology. Yeah, so there's going to be multiple different offerings for people who are families and they want to know more about themselves and do a reading for themselves and their children and to see what, you know, what gifts are coming through, what challenges. And then it's like, I'm also going to bring in shadow work for our growth. So yeah, those are my main offerings. But the children's charts is this is something kind of like a new frontier that I'm really excited about going into after working for a decade with children. I also write, I just published one of my first children's books the past years, and I have another one that's going to be coming out hopefully in the next couple of months. I'm working on that at the moment. So I just feel really passionate about 
helping parents and understanding some of their, uh, as families are linked together and what we're here to experience and help learn through each other this life. Beautiful, invaluable, absolutely invaluable. When was the children's book stage? Um, how did that come about and what was the inspiration behind it? Yeah, it's really been another thing since I was a child. As a child, I would write my mom poetry like almost every day. I would pull out a piece of printer paper and put all of the alphabet on the bottom and I would do little rhyming words. I loved writing since I was a kid. And then actually an astrologer, I was having a reading with an astrologer. My mom gifted to me when I was about 22, I think. And he had said that writing is going to be a really important part of my life and that I need to do it every day. And I, I knew it and I listened. And it was about a year later that I published my first, this one was kind of like a trial, my first children's book about the ocean. And so they all just came together very organically. Like I had... It was as if everything, all the energy was just moving through me. I didn't have any control over, I, well, I could control it, but so much creativity flowing through. And then I met the perfect artist that I was working with at a cafe. And then the next one I wrote, remember, you've got this, that's on my website. That one came through as I was working as a nanny and I was just really becoming so much more aware of the power of our words that I was speaking to the children that I was working with, but also myself. So that's all just happened very organically. Like I've loved to write since I was a kid and my next book that I want to release in the next couple of months is super silly and it's full of alliterations and it's got magical, it's got aliens and mermaids and fairies and it's going to be super fun. So I'm looking to go more and more. This first one was, a, you know, motivational uh, encouragement, really. But the next one, there's such freedom nowadays and that you can publish on your own and through so many different avenues. It's it's amazing. It's like, it's so cool because you can find an illustrator on Instagram that is so in alignment with each book. So it's really exciting. I'm really grateful to have figured out how to publish on my own. <laughs> I love feeling the passion there. And I love the title. You've got this <laughs> when we've mentioned it before, like the whole generation of you came to say, you know, we've got this. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I smile with like how many times I really, since I published that book, how many times I people, I hear people using that phrase. It's so often, it's so often that reminder, I feel like is such a beautiful reminder. I really feel honored to have done the work that I did with children for over a decade. And it's something that I'll carry with me and that I carry in every reading that I do for parents because I'm just like, I love children so much and like families. I It was such an honor to work with each family that I worked with. And I learned so much. I mean, I did a, a master's degree in business and I'm like, I learned much more as a nanny than I did going to school. <laughs> Recalling my year of, of that experience in Austria, I live in beautiful mountains of Kidsbill for a year when I was 19. And I recall already then how quickly I have grown by taking personal responsibility for the triggers that were occurring with the children, how I was hyper aware that what's inside me is being shown to me through them and their moods and their tantrums. And as I was transmuting my things, they were shifting with me. It's it's actually powerful, alchemical, personal transformation if we are aware of this. Completely. Um, I couldn't agree more. And then the more in alignment that I came with myself, I just witnessed there was particularly one child that I worked with and he was about one and a half. And the magic that we would experience together when I was like fully in alignment, the people that we would meet and like, uh, it just blew my mind when I was really feeling in alignment and we were having most, he really showed me what love was in that in a whole new way than I ever experienced. And it just, it changed my life. And I, I'm so grateful for it. And just seeing, seeing parents, like giving them that a little bit deeper of an understanding of this is your child and this is how magical they are, you know, and here's some of the struggles that might come up and here's some of their gifts and, and then reminding the parent too, like, Hey, you're awesome. Also. <laughs> Yeah, that's beautiful. And I think that's such an important part of that reading because, um, you know, especially if you do a child reading for a parent who did not yet feel fully seen in their brilliance, there may be that sadness of, okay, I have this amazing child, but I'm still unseen. So making sure to pay attention also to, to that, acknowledging them can then help them celebrate their child's brilliance so much more freely, right? 
Totally. Even, I mean, some nannying jobs I got hired for, it was essentially just to be a friend to the, the, the mom, you know, that they just want, we all like how we have shifted so much as society to raising kids on our own. It just, it, it makes me sad because I'm just like, I, as a nanny, I'm like, I want to be your best friend. I want to be there to, to help raise children in community and let them know that they're safe with other people and that they're loved and that they can, you know, go on adventures and trust other people and be inspired by other people. And the mom can have, the parents can have their own existence also there's just so yeah there's just so many beautiful lessons in parenthood which you know i i haven't had my own children yet but i got to learn and have so much beautiful experiences with other families that it's yeah it's invaluable for me wonderful so glad we are bringing this conversation into this podcast um one more question i have for you with regards to the capricorn stelium is there's such a huge amount of cosmic energies in your first house house of self how you know I, I presume you have often moments where you feel massive and there's huge amount of inspiration coming through for and, and seeing potentials of what can be done what can be created what should be done what should be created how do you navigate that without becoming overwhelmed or almost feeling like you're losing the plot what, um, <laughs> and, I, I, and I believe yoga may have been and Reiki may have been sent to you as a godsend to help you are, are these two practices uh, what kind of helped balancing this or is there anything else you know when you become aware of this overwhelm for sure I've been aware since I was young of all of that energy come in when I am expressing myself how powerful it can be I remember as a child even a specific story I was like dancing at a wedding and I just remember everyone like I could see so many people around me watching and I was so young I was like seven and I had witnessed in that moment like oh my god when I express myself truly and freely it's really powerful. And I think in some ways I would shrink because I was like, I don't want too much attention. I don't want, there was so many aspects of myself. I was still learning how to express myself, but I could feel how powerful it was. Magnetic is the word that I feel strongly. Yeah. 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 And I could feel that when I, you know, I've been told by a lot of friends like, Hey, you should be a motivational speaker. And you know, this was like, I don't know. I don't see that happening, but really Reiki really helped me to ground and yoga. I mean, a daily meditation practice since I was very young. Like I said, my first teacher training was at 19. So I just turned 30 and that's been a huge anchor in my life as well as having cards and just tools and those things like that, the tools keep evolving. So as I've evolved, it, it was like always yoga classes, yoga and meditation and uh, physical movement also. I love, I've done multiple Pilates training and bar and I love dancing. Also dancing is one of the things that if I'm ever feeling too much energy moving through, yeah, moving through like salsa, salsa dancing, being in the body has been really helpful for me when energy feels overwhelming. It's like meditation, um, movement and then just being outside in nature is my main mm -hmm. luckily living where i live now uh in northern california it's i'm just surrounded by trees and birds and animals we had a bobcat in our yard two mornings ago and so it just always keeps you present nature always keeps you present and inspired <laughs> beautiful i think it's such a beautiful manifestation of venus and mars in capricorn in first house all the disciplines that you've mentioned you know venus in capricorn you would uh -huh bring dance into movement and for it to have purpose of helping to ground or build the body's highest potential, all these things, Venus and Mars. Another thing is also music is I've been playing the ukulele for, oh. since I moved to Hawaii, it was like continual signs to keep playing the ukulele. I would play it for the kids I was nannying and mm. I just kept getting multiple signs, like keep playing it, keep playing it. And now it's like, I've started to step up and sing in front of crowds, which has been a little scary, like doing kirtan type thing. And I'm really excited as a writer, especially to start writing my own music. It's all, all the creative things are happening. They're just coming from all different directions. <laughs> the juices are flowing for sure. Well, may you continue to take really good care of your body so that all these things can fall into place naturally. Have you ever had a human design uh, chart done? I wonder if you are a manifesting yes. generator. Uh, I am a manifesting generator. <laughs> well, Amanda, such a joy, such a privilege, such an honor uh, for you to be guided to this modality. I feel 
really excited about the potential that could come through your readings and the light and joy and just activation into passionate, free self-expression for those that will be blessed to cross your path. So best wishes for all that. Do you have any parting message, anything else that you would like to share as we close? For one, I just want to say thank you so much, Julia. Your course, I feel so supported from like absolute beginning to how do I set up a business? What do I do? to like you gifting this at the end. Your course and all the time that it took me, I don't even know how long it was, about a year to get through it, maybe a little bit longer. And each phase was absolutely in complete alignment with what was going on in my life. And the effort and the amount of things that you have put in there, links, it's like, I still go back and I'm like, I wonder what Julia put for this link to Chiron. And it's just been such an incredible tool on my path. And I've had some amazing teachers in my life and you are i'm so grateful to have had you as a teacher and your course was just truly beautiful so i do want to throw that out there to people who are interested in studying more what else if people are feeling guided to a reading just do it whether it's through me or through someone else like all the readings that i've had multiple readings from different astrologers and each one has had so much magic in its own way and that people are going to find different things that light you up and activate you and yeah, I can't wait to continue to do this work with utmost integrity and passion and yeah, responsibility for this current time that we're in. It's so exciting. All the things are happening and more than ever. One thing I, I really want to emphasize is it's, it's a permission slip for you to live a life that feels authentic and aligned to you. And more and more things are coming out about galactic stuff. And it's just, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. So thank you so much for this opportunity. And I look forward to all of you that I will connect with in the future. Beautifully said. Thank you so, so much for all those kind words. There is one more uh, thought that came through as you were speaking because we've mentioned that when you focus on the family uh, readings or reading for a child and a parent, the highlight or the priority takes the relationship and what they're teaching each other, what they're learning and their highs and lows, and not as much focus on the galactic. But I also want to highlight that you can and do also bring amazing uh, information connected to the galactic alignments, as I've seen in your uh, certification reports. Um, so there is this other reading on your website as a service, Astrology and Beyond, uh, in case that was lost in the context as we were speaking earlier. There's also a nice... Yeah. And I do have notes too, that if parents like to add in, if they are particularly interested in knowing certain things, whether that's galactic or certain information, like I'm happy to you know, kind of tailor it to really what parents want to know, or if in someone's reading in particular, they want to know a little bit more about like how actually I found even this this property that I live on now was through astrocartography. And even like an astrologer had mentioned to me in a reading, he told me very specifically, like, you need to go to Rio de Janeiro. And he's like, you'll understand why when you get there. And later on, when I could read my own astrocartography, I have all of these huge spots right around Rio de Janeiro. And when I went, long story short, I had a Kundalini awakening there. And I was just like, this is just so, how is this so accurate? It's amazing. That's good to know. I have all those spots concentrated in Iceland. So I might mm. pay a visit at some yeah. point. And I was curious about your astrology astrocartography lines in peru you know you've you've been there uh, a lot have you looked what uh, planetary line is coming through there for you i don't remember there's nothing like very very specific right in peru but as for peru it's interesting there aren't like specific lines that are going through as like a hot spot but i think i have a, a line close to it um i do have lines in hawaii and then my how I found this property, I had a, a Venus line and where I'm living right now, a Venus line and a Mars line going right through it. And I'd actually never been to this part of Northern California before. And immediately when I moved in, it was like everything was just happening. I've been able to, yeah, so being able to know where those lines are and to travel to them or, you know, a lot of people want to, them for moving, but it's just so interesting to know what has happened, like what can come up for you in certain spots. Maybe you can have a Kundalini awakening, who knows? <laughs> Absolutely. The other day I was talking to a lady who fell in love madly in Italy and we looked at her astrocartography and Venus line was running through <laughs> exactly the area where she was. So Venus is perfect. Venus line is perfect line to, to find love and feel loved and connect on that 
passionate. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to learning and looking, opening up more charts. As I'm opening up charts, I, I didn't describe this all that well in our, our the previous uh, the chat we were talking about this, but I open up so many different things when I'm opening up a chart, even for a child. It's I also look into someone's gene keys. I've been setting the gene keys for multiple years. And I don't go deep, deep into the gene keys, but particularly when I've opened up charts, I see patterns. And so connecting the patterns between um, human design, gene keys, their galactic chart, and then opening up their Akashic records. So it's kind of like a puzzle. <laughs> it's like the most fun puzzle for me ever because I really just follow. I'm learning to trust to go where I'm guided versus doing a reading. Originally, I was going to do a traditional astrology chart, basic reading. And I'm like, I can't. I just, there's so many things that I want to introduce that if I feel guided to bring up someone's gene keys or Akashic records, I, I can do that because it's that. my business. <laughs> and uh, that's probably your North Node in um, Sagittarius, being able to comprehend multiple systems. But the beauty of that and the richness of that, that usually as we look at multiple different systems, the clues to the main themes and what's really important will stand out unanimously through all these systems. So it's like crystal clear that, yeah, this some, this has to be mentioned. This is really important for you and for your life. So it's um, such high value when we have practitioners who can work with multiple high quality modalities so i'm just so grateful that you're here beautiful well well done congratulations best of luck and um, thank you all for watching and we look forward to seeing you in another podcast soon take care thanks julia <laughs>